Thank you, Steve. I told Steve I gave him easy readings. I didn't tell him I gave him four. So uh, I guess he had to take a shot back at me. <clears throat> but it uh, wasn't hard, was it, Steve? No, very good. Hey, good. You did super. Thank you. As I said to the children this morning, I have, we're going to talk about words again today. And it's all in English. I'm not going to speak foreign languages like I've done before here. But uh, this will all be in English. We're going to be talking four very important words. And I'm going to be asking you, as I did in the spark, I said, see if you can think of a word that combines these four words. And good news, I'm not going to, at the end, ask, uh, you know, we're not, this isn't a workshop. I'm going to say, who thought of this? I'm going to ask you to keep it to yourself. But that's what we'll be doing here today. My wife and I, Linda, just got back from a cruise. That's why I was speaking French there for a moment. We were in Quebec. And I got to use some of my French, or hear some French. Uh, it was a, sim a very simple cruise, by most cruises standards. It was from New York to Quebec. Uh, 12 days. It was very pleasant, very relaxing. And uh, I got a reminder on that cruise of something very important that I'm going to end this sermon with. It's a re an important reminder that's good and great for all of us. It came out of nowhere. It came a big surprise. All of a sudden, I have a, a little reminder, and I'll share that at the end. It's for all of us. But back to the words. Uh, yeah, it's kind of got the title of it. That was the title of the, uh, of the sermon I kind of modified it. Unfortunately, I got here Thursday, and by then the bulletin was printed. But the uh, actual title that I had for this sermon is Love, Pray, Give, Rejoice, semicolon, The Reprise. The uh, Zach, first sermon he did, I was here that Sunday, and Zach's first sermon was that title, Love, Pray, Give, Rejoice, those four words. And those are the four words I'm going to be talking to. And I'm going to be asking you to think if there's a word like the word play that combines all the ones that the children thought of. So let's put some thought into that as I talk here. I have an answer to that, but not necessarily the right answer, but an, an answer. But the reprise part of this, I think you all know the word reprise. It comes, the only place I use, I've seen it used is in plays, where there's a song that's introduced somewhere in the play and then it's done again and the reprise, and it usually has a different meaning later in the play. The most typical thing is it's a love song. Most of the musicals have a, a actor and actress who fall in love, and in the first act, they're starting to fall in love. It starts out they're either enemies or not, certainly not in love, but uh, they start to fall in love, and they sing this lover's duet the first time, uh, and they're falling in love. It's pretty. It's a falling in love duet, and then by the second, something usually goes wrong at the end of the first act, and then they're mad at each other. But by the second act, they're back together, and, and often at the, the play ends like with a marriage. And, and there's the reprise of the song. But it's different now. It's the same song, but it feels way different because things have happened. It's a different relationship. They're not falling in love. They're in love. They're getting married. Same thing with the, uh, this, this uh, sermon topic, Love, Pray, Give, Rejoice. It was, it was really, really great when Zach gave it the first time, but we're different now. It's been a few months, and we're a different congregation. Zach's a di in a different mode than he was then. The whole Bechtel family's in a different mode than they were then. So uh, it's a little different view. It's the reprise of that theme. But before I get into those words and talking about each of those words, again, I told you I was on a cruise. Um, and cruise, the, the formula is you spend a day at port, and you go on shore and you do, you do fun things, and you come back to the boat, you spend the night on the boat, and they cruise to another port. And while you're cruising, they give you entertainment. Usually there's a lecture, or sing, or songs, or piano playing, or that sort of stuff. And there's usually, it always ends, the night ends with the uh, cruise director giving a, uh, his monologue, his jokes. So I've got a joke to share. Now jokes at, uh, on cruise ships are typically, or often, directed toward the captain, making fun of the captain. For some reason, he's an easy target. So uh, several of the jokes are, t are targeting him. Yeah, the one I've, I had a couple I was going to play here with, the one I've decided to use, is uh, associated with a lifeboat drill, which they do always on, on board. And uh, the joke is the captain is, the lifeboat drill's over, uh, all the lifeboats are back uh, except one, and the captain gets his binoculars, looks out, sees the missing lifeboat, and he gets on his walkie-talkie, and he says, uh, Lifeboat 9, uh, please report back. The drill is over. 
and lifeboat nine didn't move. So uh, a few seconds later, he does it again. Uh, lifeboat nine, please come back where the drill is over. Well, the second uh, the assistant captain comes through and says, uh, uh, Captain, uh, we only have eight lifeboats. Uh, that we don't have a lifeboat nine. <laughs> captain looks out again and says, uh, lifeboat six, are you in trouble? <laughs> okay, good, y'all got it. I was a little worried about that one. So back to the serious part of this. Love. Love. Well, this is a good word to start with. Uh, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians, it's the most important. And I had Steve read the famous uh, lines out of uh, Matthew where Jesus is answering what's the most important commandment, and he says, uh, love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And then, I didn't have Steve read that, I was, I, I was kind of, since I had four, I kind of shortened it for him. And then, he, and then he's asked, uh, well, even before he's asked, he says, and the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. And that's, all, that's just as important as the first. In fact, it really is the first packaged a little differently. And then somebody says, so well, who's, who's my neighbor? And he doesn't answer it, typical Jesus. He gives a parable. He tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, which the answer, in other words, is uh, it's everybody. It's those people who aren't like you. It's everybody who you think isn't you. It's everybody. It's the, uh, in our current words, it's people who are uh, marginalized in our current the way we talk about people. People who are not in this room right now. There could be some in this room, probably are. But it's the marginalized. It's the people in Syria who are, don't have a country. It's everybody who you don't think, it's everybody, is what Jesus said. It's everybody. That's who God loves. And that was, that's what Matthew's, or that's what Jesus' answer was about love. Love is for everybody. God loves each of us with uh, no conditions. We're unconditionally loved. And he implores us to love everybody exactly like that. He hopes we will. That's what love's about. Simple concept, virtually impossible to do. But it's the first concept, the first word to talk about, love. Let's move on to pray, another verb. Pray. We've already had a prayer, several of them, uh, several of them here in this church, uh, just this morning. Uh, several prayers, and maybe individual prayers have happened. Pray, prayers are something we do a lot. When I was uh, in Sunday school, I learned a formula on how to do a prayer. I'm going to share it here. Maybe, maybe some of you know it. There's an acronym, acronym that I use to remember it. Uh, AXIT. It's a bad acronym because it's not really a word. But it's an acronym, A-C-S-I-T, AXIT. A is to adoration. Praise God. It's always a good way to start when you're uh, talking to anyone. Say, what a great guy you are. You always start with that. You know, that gets your attention. Same thing with God. Praise him first. Hallowed be your name. There you go. Very beginning of the Lord's Prayer. We're praising God. We Praise you is the very start of it. The C is confession. You admit, hey, I've done things wrong. I've sinned. Forgive me my trespasses. Yeah, I've trespassed. I've made mistakes. Another little personal sharing here is most of my sins, I, I don't categorize them, I don't keep track of them, but I suspect most of my sins are of omission more than commission. In other words, the things I didn't do that I should have done are my most of my sins. Well, there's plenty of the omission, or commissions too, but the omission ones, remember your omission sins when you're thinking about your trespasses. Things you could have done that God wanted you to do. Love you could have done that you didn't do. Remember your omissions too. That's in the uh, area of confessions. Uh, then we come to uh, supplication. That's a fancy word. That's the S. That's the fancy word for what you're asking God for things. Typically, uh, good health, somebody sick, uh, safe travel, those sorts of things are your supplications that we do. And the I is something we forget often. It's intercession. This is, we're good at talking and not so good at listening. Uh, that, you know, there's an old adage about uh, you have one mouth and two ears, you should listen twice, at least twice as much as you talk. Same is true with God. We, give, we, we talk to God, we tell him our, we confess things we've done wrong and we, we uh, talk about what we'd like to have different. We often forget to sit and listen. Listen to God. And I remember as a child saying to my mom, 
you know, I don't really hear them. And, you know, I, I try to listen, and uh, it's not like talking to you, Mom. And she said, well, you're not listening hard enough. God talks to us through the Holy Spirit. God talks to us through our conscience. God tells us what he's thinking through our conscience. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's God talking to us, telling us the answers. But we have to take time to listen. He's not yelling, like mothers often do. He, uh, he, he talks very, very quietly at a time of intercession where we have to be quiet, we have to think. What is it God wants in this situation? That's the intercession. And then the tea part of the prayer time, that's the thankful one. Boy, it's, that's, for me, I've, I have a really easy time with that. I'm thankful for so much in my life. I've got good health, a lot of happiness, a wonderful marriage, six very happy, healthy children, <clears throat> 11 very happy, healthy grandchildren, one great grandchild, my goodness. The list goes on and on and on and on for me. But for all of you too, there's many things that I'm sure you're all thankful for that have gone right in your life, that continues to go right, that you're thankful for. That's the, a very good closing on prayers. Remember our thankfulness. Well, we move to give. This is Stewardship Sunday, if you didn't know. And that's why I'm talking today. I'm the finance chair here. So I'm, I'm here, the reason I'm giving the sermon today is that uh, I'm the finance chair and we're talking about giving. That's today's message. Well, you might think I'm going to hit that hard, but actually I'm backing up a little bit on the financial giving. I want to talk about giving in the big, broad sense, that God wants us to give of ourselves to him, to the church, to our lives, to others. That includes, in fact, primarily our time. You give, you're here. You're giving yourself this Sunday morning to be here to worship God to thank God for everything he's given you and, and to be here to ad adore him and to praise him. We praise him with song. We praise him with our presence. Your presence here is a key part of your giving to the church, to God. But you also give through committees. I'm finance chair, even though I only live here 30% of my life, but still I'm the finance chair. I gave what time I had. There are many other members of committees and leaders of committees that I'm looking at right now who give more than just coming Sunday morning. That's a giving. But there's also the stewardship drive about giving our finances. Yes, this church does need money to operate. You know, heaven help us if it didn't, if we didn't have the money. And, and we need that. So please, as you pray as, about this church and about yourself and about who you are and what you want to be, listen to God. Listen at that intercession time. Listen to what he's going to say is what you should be doing, what he wants you to do, what is right for you to do in the way of pledge time here for the church. By the way, if you don't have, I've got, I've got my little pledge here. And if you brought your pledge today, you can put it in the offering basket as it goes around. Or there never can be too late to pledge. We accept pledges anytime, right, Sharon? You're right so, okay, good. There's no deadline on turning in your, your pledge. And then rejoice the last of our four words. Oh yes, we need to rejoice. It's so easy to see the faults of what's, what could be better in the world. As we pray, when we think about our country and our world, it's so easy to see the trouble. But oh my goodness, God, what you've given us and what you continue to give us and what you're going to give us, oh, so wonderful, far more than we deserve and far more than we could ever design. You'll look around us, look at the days, look at the beauty we have, look at the beauties outside. And don't miss, look at the beauty inside here. Look at the people around you, these wonderful, wonderful people who are here worshiping all together. What a, what a gift God's given us to have this body of Christ right here together, worshiping and being together and having fellowship. Oh, we have so much to rejoice for. It's so easy to see what's wrong and not see what's right. There's far more right than wrong. Please remember that as we rejoice. So you've had about 10 minutes to think of a word. Uh, I'm not, as I said, I'm not going to uh, ask you what that word is, but have it in your mind. And there, this, this sermon comes with homework, as I often do when I talk here. Yes, there's homework. You probably came here with somebody. If not, you might be going out with somebody afterwards. There'd be somebody you could talk to after the service. Share what, what if you had a word that, that you thought combined those four. 
and share that and see what they thought. I haven't asked Linda. I, I don't know what she's thinking. She might, this is crazy, she might be thinking. But, um, but your homework is to talk to somebody else about your thoughts of combining these four words like I did with the children. <clears throat> so, what's my word? Worship. We worship together. When we worship, we certainly do, uh, we have love. We show love with one another. We certainly pray. We've already done a pr several prayers here, and I'm sure there's others going on. We certainly give. Well, that's coming up, the actual financial giving. But we give our time to be here and that. And rejoice. We sing songs. We praise. We, that's a big part of a worship service, is, singing, is doing praise. So I, thought, I like the word worship as a, a single word that combines those thoughts into a single concept. And we are a, a group of people who get together to worship and we have these four components that Zach gave us a couple months ago as he first started to help break it apart so we know what we need to do in, order, in our worship service. And here we are, this is the reprise. We're now re reviewing those concepts with the stewards of, or the financial chair's view of it. A little different view, a little different time, but the same ideas. I'd, uh, at the start of this, I promised to have a a reminder, as I'm calling it, a, a, an event in my life that kind of was a surprise and a, re, and a wake up call of some form that I'm hoping that all of you can relate this to your lives. It was on this, <clears throat> excuse me, it was on this cruise. The cruise, as I said, was from New York to Quebec. It went up the East Coast and came down the St. Lawrence Seaway. Uh, the third stop was in Maine, nice, very, in the city of Bar Harbor, or of course, uh, Bahaba, as the uh, New Englanders say it. So it was in Bob that uh, Linda and I, we didn't have an excursion. We just got off the ship and walked around town. We'd, been the, we'd actually been to Bar Harbor before. So we did something different. And, you know, normally you go to the, uh, there's a national park there, Arcadia, which is special. But we'd done that, so we wanted to do something different. So we went into a town, we had lunch. <clears throat> Bar Harbor has, uh, it's a harbor. And there's a lot of uh, lobster traps on the harbor, a lot of them. Because they, they, they're very proud of sustainably uh, harvesting their lobsters. They're not depleting them, they're doing it sustainably. But I went in town and we went, walked around town. Linda bought some rocks there. She's really big on rocks. <clears throat> so we bought some rocks. We do that a lot of places. And then we had lunch and I had, guess what, lobster. Normally you have a lobster tail and it's all kind of prepared for you and it's kind of easy to eat. Uh, but when they give you a lobster, it's a lobster. And, and you got, you know, they give you a nutcracker and go, and go to work. Uh, so you have to get all the meat out of this. And I did that, it was a little bit messy. They give you a bib, just in case. And I needed it, it was a mess. So it was a good lobster meal. And that night on the cruise ship, I am getting to the point of this, that night on the cruise ship, they had at the buffet area, lobster, is real lobsters, you know, they're cooked. And in the buffet area. Now the n normal restaurant, they have a big uh, main dining hall where a lot of people go. But we always went up to the buffet, buffet. it was a little bit easier. But the buffet was mobbed because of the uh, lobster dinners, real lobsters. So uh, as we walked in, normally you'd walk in, sit down, and get your food. We walked in, and the, and the place was packed. So the maitre d' says, I have to find a place for you to sit. And he finds a place for us to sit with a table of six. We sit down. And after we get our food and uh, we introduce ourselves, uh, and that's always a trick for us because it, you know, it's always your name and where you're from. Well. I sometimes say Montana, I sometimes say Seattle, and sometimes I say both, and then that confuses people. So I usually just pick one or the other. I like Montana, actually, because that gets their attention. Oh, Montana, yeah. So we go through that. They were with their, their, the other two couples are from California, and uh, then the woman, one of the women from California says, and be, now, mind you, we've been on this cruise three days, and there's more than a thousand people on this cruise ship, three days. And this woman says, and be sure to do your grace like you always do, and that little kiss thing you do with your wife always. You know, I've been there three days. How did she, I mean, she, I, hadn't, I didn't even recognize her, much less have any clue that she said grace. So I go, wow, okay. Uh, so then I lean over to start to say, kind of privately, the graceful thing. And you go, oh, no, 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 no. Let's do it together. You pray for all of us. So yeah, okay, I can do that, sure. So uh, I didn't do through all five parts of a grace, but uh, of a prayer. But I, there were two of them from Santa Rosa, which was burning. So I prayed for them. And I prayed for a safe cruise, and I prayed thankfulness for, wow, what a wonderful life we have. 
here on this beautiful cruise ship in this pretty town of Bar Harbor. But the point of this story is you never know who's watching. You never know. You never know the impact you're having. Oh, by the way, the little kiss thing. Well, when we're sitting next to each other, we kiss, but otherwise, we do that. So that's the little kiss thing, if you're wondering. But uh, what, a, what a strange thing to happen, that uh, this woman who didn't know me from anybody had noticed that Lynn and I pray. I implore all of you to be aware of what you do. People notice you. People know what you're doing. People know you come to church. People know when you're praying. People know when you love. People know when you give. People know when you rejoice. Be aware of what you do. It makes a statement about you and it helps bring God's world, what God wants in this world, to this world. Be aware. Be with me now, be with me now as I pray. Wonderful God, we are totally in awe of everything you have done and everything you do. The world, the universe is amazing, and we are so blessed to be a part of it. We are amazed. We know we don't do everything we can. We know that there's more we can do, and our sins are of a commission and a mission. We confess our faults. We understand you forgive us. We need your help to be better. Please help us. Help us to be more aware of what you want us to be and to live better and to help your kingdom come on this earth as it is in heaven. I move to intercession. I'm purposely going to be a little more quiet here. I want you to think about your, what you want to do better, what you could do. Remember this is Stewardship Sunday. Think of that too. Listen to God's voice. Listen to the Holy Spirit within you. We all have it. God gave it to us. Hear the Holy Spirit talking to you as it relates to us here in this church, as it relates to how you live your life and show others how you live. Remember that. And God, we are so thankful. So thankful for so much we have. Our good health, our good food, our, our happiness, our loved ones. We have so much more than we deserve. We thank you, God, for that. Be with us today and all days. So be it. Amen.